Now at six, what the Biden administration is doing this morning as more migrants arrive at the U.S.-Mexico border. I think this is something that should have been fixed uh, before we raise rates. Tens of thousands of San Diegans are not getting water bills. Is a fix finally on the way? A part of my voice that I would have never have discovered, I don't think, if it wasn't for singing mariachi. He's a no sabo kid no more. We'll explain how one San Diegan who didn't learn Spanish growing up taught himself through music. Today is the standout cool day with cloudy skies to start off the morning, even a few showers. We'll talk about how conditions are going to change as we head toward the upcoming weekend. It's 6 a.m. on Thursday, September 21st, and you're up with CBS 8. This morning, the Biden administration is announcing new actions to deal with the influx of migrants arriving at the U.S.-Mexico border. Thanks so much for joining us here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Irampour. Officials say conditions are at a crisis level. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live in San Ysidro now with what the Department of Homeland Security is going to do. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, good morning. We woke up this morning to a number of different changes that the DHS is making in order to try to help out here with this troubling situation. It's not happening just here in San Diego, though. We we've recognized that problem, but we're seeing it in New York. We're seeing it in parts of Texas as well, too, where shelters are simply at capacity. Yes, we have reached to a point of crisis. We simply don't want to say no. And that was, uh, again, a gentleman there who runs one of the shelters in Texas that has uh, seemingly, again, been overwhelmed there, uh, running out of resources, running out of room. So in response to all of this, the federal government has announced that 500,000 Venezuelan migrants will be given legal status to work and live in the U.S. It's for those that arrived through the end of July. So July 31st there is the cutoff for when they came to the country. If you would qualify for this, the reason why uh, they do not want to give those who are still in Venezuela are still making that trip across the border to get uh, again to be incentivized to try uh, to come here. They're also sending 800 active duty service members to the border. They're joining the 2500 National Guard members already in place. They're also taking steps to increase deportations. This as the daily number of illegal border crossings rose to more than 800,000 people a day. For context, it was 4300 in July. Now, the reason why that half a million uh, Venezuelans being given that legal right to work and live in the U.S. is uh, seen, seen as helpful is because it takes the average asylum seeker about 180 days to get legal status to work in the U.S. to be able to support themselves while they're awaiting uh, their case to find out if they will indeed be staying here in the U.S. It's something that we learned uh, at a recent job fair being held for immigrants and refugees here in the city of San Diego. Speaking of the city of San Diego, we learned, uh, excuse me, that the county, throughout the entire county, that about uh, more than 4,000 migrants have been dropped off at trolley stations over the past six days. That according to Supervisor Jim Desmond. So that's the issue that we're seeing happen here in San Diego uh, throughout the county. But as we pointed out here, not just happening here, but all across the U.S. Eric and Netta. USA! 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 And now at least 10 people are under arrest in New York after trying to block a bus carrying migrants. Look at all these people. The bus was taking people to a shelter on Staten Island. People were seen banging on the bus windows and you see them chanting there. The migrants were able to get off the bus, eventually enter the shelter, but it took hours for them to do that. Uh, back here at home, local organizations are stepping up to help migrants, but they are struggling to keep up with that high demand. Interfaith Community Services says they've helped more than 300 migrants who Border Patrol dropped off in Oceanside over this past week. Volunteers there are giving out food, clothes, and helping migrants get connected with their sponsors here in the United States. They can get their phones charged up, talk to their families, get them food, water, clothing, because a lot of these individuals have been locked into detention centers that maybe haven't been showering for months, weeks, days. Um, they don't know what day it is. They don't know what time it is. They don't know anything when they are released. So those volunteers are trying to help them out, many of them leaving countries from all over the world, ending up in Oceanside. The group says people are arriving from those various countries. They speak French, Arabic, Spanish, some of the most common languages being spoken. 
This morning, thousands of union health care workers in California are going closer and closer to a strike against Kaiser per Permanente. 7,000 Kaiser workers, including 4,500 here in San Diego, voted to authorize a strike to protest what they're calling unfair labor practices. Nearly 70,000 workers in six states could be going on strike, making it the largest health care strike in U.S. history. To avoid strikes, the union and Kaiser need to reach an agreement by September 30th. The next scheduled negotiations are tomorrow. This morning, the average price for a gallon of gas in San Diego County still very high, $5.99, the same as it was yesterday. But it is 39 cents higher than one week ago and up 51 cents higher than this time last year. And they are paying even more in Los Angeles. Take a look at this. Some stations charging over $7 a gallon. Seven's all the way down at this station here. The average price in LA today is $6.06, but again, some at over $7. The recent price spike is due to oil supply cuts and refinery issues. Experts say we could see some relief at the end of the month. Working for you here to help you find the cheapest gas in town, just text the word gas to 858-571-8888. We're going to send you a link to find some of the stations with the lowest gas prices here in San Diego County. Water rates in the city of San Diego are going up now, and Oceanside might be next. Oceanside's water rates could climb 6% in 2024 and another 6% in 2025. It's under a new proposal by the city's water utilities director. The UT reports this is from a rate increase by the Metropolitan Water District. That's where San Diego County gets its water and then sells it to local agencies. The proposal will go to the Oceanside City Council for approval on November. 15th. The city of San Diego just approved a series of water rate increases as we've been reporting. This totals nearly 20% over the next two years and it comes amid those billing issues with the city's public utilities department. During an audit committee meeting yesterday, officials said fixes are on the way and customers could get notification that their bills are withheld as early as this week. During that meeting, council member Vivian Moreno again used CBS 8's coverage to drive home the ongoing billing issues that customers have faced for years. We've seen a number of high profile news reports showing customers who received bills as high as $16,000. Uh, do you anticipate being able to uh, fulfill this recommendation by November as indicated in the report? Yes, we actually anticipate having that by the end of this month, if not by the end of this week. Okay, well, during that audit committee meeting, we also learned 30,000 bills are on hold. That's up from the 28,000 that we had been reporting. Mm, impacting a lot of you. This morning, an investigation is underway in Mira Mesa, where a woman was hit and killed by a car. This happened around 8 last night on Mira Mesa Boulevard near Pacific Heights Boulevard. Investigators say a woman in her 50s was crossing the street when she was hit. The driver stopped and is cooperating with police. This morning, Peso Pluma has now canceled his Tijuana concert after receiving threats from a cartel. The show was supposed to be on October 14th, but authorities found several banners threatening the Mexican singer around TJ last week. On his record label's Instagram post, they said that they are canceling the show for the safety of everyone involved. Right now, Peso Pluma is scheduled to come to San Diego on September 30th. This morning, health officials are warning that West Nile virus was found in mosquitoes at the Los Penasquitos Lagoon. This marks the first sign of the disease in mosquitoes this year. According to the county website, two birds have also tested positive. So far, no human cases have been reported. Now, officials are reminding you to dump any standing water around your home to keep mosquitoes from breeding. Time now is 6.08 and checking in on the forecast. Can we have another repeat, please? We will. Ooh. We will indeed. It'll be very, <laughs> very nice, nice out there, very comfortable. And then for coastal cleanup this yeah. weekend, it's going to be a little bit warmer and okay. a little clearer, but otherwise we're not seeing any major adjustment. Nice. Nice. Okay, so, I love it. Something to run with. Uh, look at the forecast for today. The only difference from yesterday is that we have a, a just minor drop in temperature. So along the coast and inland will be maybe a degree or two cooler than yesterday. But besides that, it's a nearly identical forecast. Clouds start off the day AM clouds PM sun partly cloudy as you make your way inland. Temperatures are going to be in the low 70s along the coast, low 70s inland, mid 60s across the mountains and mid 80s out there for the deserts with a lot more sunshine favoring the mountains and deserts. Of course, as that marine layer pushes on shore, indication that some of those clouds could drop a tiny bit of moisture. Some of those showers are starting to move on shore. However, so far we haven't picked up on any observed totals, and that means that it's more so that these clouds are capable 
capable of dropping rain on us, but are not. So it's just a, a very cloudy gray start to the day with some pockets of sunshine once the sun does come up in about the next half hour or so. Four miles of visibility in Ramona. We've talked about how these numbers have fluctuated. There's nothing really on here that is all that menacing in terms of visibility. You should be able to head out. You'll see the gray, but those clouds won't be all that low down to the ground. When we look at the five day forecast, though, this is what we're talking about. Coastal cleanup, for example, any weekend plans that you have in store. Look at this. We're going to climb by about six, maybe seven degrees or so into the upcoming weekend as a ridge of high pressure builds briefly. This climb in temperatures bringing us to 80 degrees on Saturday is still not above average. Doesn't even match average. Average is about the mid 80s, so we will remain cooler than average by the time we get to this warm up, but it'll at least be a little bit of a notable difference from Friday. The start of the fall season tomorrow will still be cool tomorrow. Cloudy out there and then we'll start to see those clouds break apart with a little bit more speed on Saturday, Sunday, cooling down a bit going into Monday. Let's take a look at what we have as far as your border wait times go. It's 610 on the clock right now, just about to hit 611. And right now the San Ysidro port of entry looking at 145 minute wait. This is a especially long wait this morning, so you're going to be waiting upwards of two, nearly two and a half hours at the San Ysidro port of entry. Otay Mesa port of entry going to get you through a lot quicker. An hour and 10 minutes might be a better idea to try to make your way to the Otay Mesa port of entry if you're able to, uh, but we do know otherwise that you're going to have to just be ready for uh, an over two hour wait at the San Ysidro port of entry. That and Eric feel for those people who are right. stuck for it's that long. long. Thanks, wait. Evan. Uh, still ahead here. Could the writers strike end soon? Plus, the Fed pauses interest rate hikes, but mortgage rates are still sky high where buyers are turning now. Aren't you, in fact, in contempt of Congress when you refuse to answer? Congressman, I have the greatest respect for Congress. A tense hearing on Capitol Hill, the attorney general's response after being accused of weaponizing the Department of Justice.